Let's bring you some reaction now to that uh, big developing story from golf, which has major significance to the Ryder Cup, because live golfers Ian Poulter, Lee Westwood, Sergio Garcia and Richard Bland have all resigned from the DP World Tour and in the process are now ineligible for the European team to take on the United States in golf's premium competition this autumn. We can speak to Jamie Weir now uh, to uh, discuss the story. Jamie, very good evening to you. I mean, this, I suppose, has been a, a big subplot to the, the split that really has splintered the world of golf. How have we reached this stage, though? Well, I think the decision today or the confirmation today, Jules, that these guys will be ineligible to be part of the Ryder Cup team this year and presumably Ryder Cup teams going forward, whether that's even in a vice captaincy or captaincy capacity, I think it's kind of inevitable, to be quite honest with you. I think from the moment that Sports Resolutions, the independent arbitrator who was deciding um, whether the DP World Tour could impose these sanctions on these players in that legal hearing against the live defectors, as soon as they decided that the DP World Tour were allowed to impose sanctions in, in the shape of fines and suspensions, I think it was inevitable that players were going to resign their DP World Tour membership um, faced with you know big, big fines to play, suspensions, it wasn't going to be worth their while. There are two criteria, as Luke Donald has said repeatedly, to be eligible for the Ryder Cup team from a European point of view. That is, one, be European, and two, have DP World Tour membership. These guys are now no longer DP World Tour members, so they will not be part of the Ryder Cup team. It is a sad day in some ways as well, because putting Richard Bland to one side for a second, the other three guys, Sergio Garcia, Lee Westwood, Ian Poulter, they've been... Fantastic stalwarts, uh, the backbone of many um, victorious European Ryder Cup teams for over two decades now. They've done a lot for the European Tour, now the DP World Tour as well. And it is sad to see their Ryder Cup careers come to an end like this. I think in the case of Westwood and Poulter, there's an argument that they perhaps shouldn't even have been in the last Ryder Cup team at Whistling Straits. But certainly Sergio Garcia was one of those stars, one of the rare European stars in that um, defeat at Whistling Straits a couple of years ago. And there were even some people saying that he could be uh, an outside candidate for this year's team. But this is the situation we're in now. I think there's still a lot of raw feelings from a lot of the players who are going to be on that team. Um, I think having live players there would have created some tension. It would have created a bit of a sideshow ahead of the Ryder Cup when Europe really need to be fully focused on trying to get that cup back from the Americans, which you know they're going to have a fight in their hands to do so. And just just say on that Ryder Cup point, and, and in terms of sort of their legacies, the three of the four players you mentioned, they're absolutely synonymous with European successes down the line. And you use the word, it's sad that you know that it comes to an end for them in that regard now. And, you know, you could have just have seen, couldn't you, Poulter, Westwood, Garcia as future captains, which now will not happen. Yeah, well, arguably for the next decade, you always had those captains these sort of planned out in advance. Ian Poulter, Lee Westwood, Sergio Garcia, Graham McDowell, Martin Keimer. They are all now live players. And, and that is the big void that is left, as I said, from a playing point of view, with the possible exception of Sergio Garcia. I suppose you could say Paul Casey as well. From a playing point of view, their day, their best days were probably behind them already. But certainly in terms of vice captaincies and captaincies, they were the next cabs off the rank. And that is the void that has been left now. The European Tour, the DP World Tour will have to turn to other people now instead. The likes of Justin Rose, Eduardo Molinari, who's a vice captain for Luke Donald in Rome this year. Robert Carlson, who's been a vice captain for the last couple of Ryder Cups. And those are the sort of names that now we, that Europe will be looking to in the years to come. There's no doubt that they have a tremendous Ryder Cup legacy. Sergio Garcia is the highest point scorer of all time in Ryder Cup history, European or US. And that's something that could be never taken away from him until somebody overtakes that record. So you know, their records speak for themselves. As I said, they've been popular members, backbones of many successful European teams in years gone by. But it is sad that it's had to come to an end like this. You know, they knew the consequences of their actions, as the European Tour pointed out in their statement today. These are actual consequences of their own choices. They were paid an awful lot of money, an eye-watering amount of money to go over to live. They knew when they did that that they were potentially forfeiting the chance to earn world ranking points, to get into major championships, and also that it would have Ryder Cup repercussions as well. So, look, it's sad from that point of view, but I think a lot of the players have been saying, you know, they, they made their bed, they now have to lie in it. They knew when they were taking that huge amount of money to join live that they were pot potentially waving goodbye to the Ryder Cup careers, and that has proven to be the case. Jamie Witt, thanks very much indeed for that detail.